Recording is on. Cool. So thanks for coming to the social media recap session. Um, we've got quite a bit to get through um, in a bit less than an hour now. So I'm going to get started and share my screen. I've got a bunch of slides that I'm going to present. If there are any questions at the end, that's great. Don't worry if there's not any questions. If you want me to slow down or go over anything in more detail, that's totally fine. If you don't want to jump in and ask, you can also, I'm going to share my screen now and show you. Um, you can jump into the chat as well. Um, so if you have any questions during the session, if you go to this bottom left corner icon, you can open up the chat and just type your question in there and then I can get to it at the end. So if anything, so it saves you then trying to remember, if you don't want to interrupt you, you might try and remember it to the end of the session. Um, so it's just another way to, to ask questions. And cool, so I've made some slides here. And can you see them? Is that, can I just get like a wave if there's, they're okay? Cool, I'm gonna bring them back and I'm gonna start presenting. Last session that I did, um, I presented the whole session and then realized that the slides weren't um, recorded. So it's just a whole session of me talking <laughs> with, about these mysterious slides that weren't being shown. So um cool here we go so again thanks for coming this session is all about how to succeed with social media marketing there may be a little bit of um, repetition with some things i've covered before so this is really very much a recap session to help to really embed some of these ideas because one thing i've known in my journey with marketing is that repetition is the mother of all learning um, and when you hear the same idea a few times it just helps to really kind of embed them and the next time you're kind of thinking about what to do with social media or you're, it's just easier to kind of pull in these these tips to succeed once you've heard them a couple of times um, particularly because there's so much to think about with social media it can feel a bit overwhelming so even if you're hearing a repetition of ideas it helps you to feel like you know what you're doing as well when you've got like a bank of ideas that you've heard before. So um, the things I'm going to cover in this session, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to define your goals and strategy with social media and talk about an asset that I've created that I'd like to share with you. Um, also, I'm going to talk about how to get on the right side of the social media algorithms. I'm going to talk about how to create a posting schedule and to commit to it. And also, I'm going to have a little brief overview of how to create great content that your audience will love. Um, I'm going to talk about how you can start to build and support your digital community and all of the amazing wins that come out of this action. And I'm going to talk about how to take action for growth and visibility in social media. So what specific things can you do to help to grow your followers, um, both on Facebook and Instagram? And also then the importance of measuring results and improving from the results that you measure. So I'm going to talk a bit about how to do that. Um, some of the session is going to be in detail and some of it will be pointing you into new directions of things to kind of take away and, and look at in your in your own time. Again, if you've ever got any questions and you want to go uh, any deeper in any of these bits, then I'm on the Facebook Marketing Hub group. Um, I'm here to help you. So feel free to drop me a, either a personal message on Facebook um, or you can email me as well. I'll put my email address at the end of these slides. So when I share them on the Facebook group, you've got a personal contact with me too. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna get started and talk about the importance of defining your goals and strategy. So it's really important with social media to start with your wider business goals um, because this will ensure that your marketing strategy aligns with and supports your main strategic plan for your business. So it's important with social media because you really it, it's social media can be a bit of a kind of you know, like the string analogy of how long is a piece of string it helps you if you anchor everything you're doing in your social media actions with your overall business goals it helps you to make sure that the time you spend on social media um, is sustainable and makes sense for you and what you're hoping to achieve as a business so some examples of some business goals that could link with social media are, for example, um, driving more sales, increasing profitability, um, growing just awareness of your hub, um, reaching new demographics, new customer groups, for example. 
Um, it could be um, a goal could be around gaining funding. And so you might have a strategy then with social media of how to engage with potential funders or um, also things like cut, in, reducing customer attrition and maintaining customer relationships, that kind of thing. So there's a big, wide, broad group of different business goals that you can help achieve with your social media actions. So, so yeah, so it's just being strategic is really key. And it's just when you're thinking about your social media, just really defining what social media success means for you. One of the ways that I do this is setting smart goals for social media. And what a smart goal is, is just making sure that your goal is really specific. So as clear and simple as you can make the goal, which makes it a lot easier to achieve. Um, make sure it's measurable. So that means that make sure you can know when you've achieved that goal because that helps you maintain your motivation for a goal so for example an uh, easy to measure goal would be to increase followers on Facebook by um, 20 per month or something like this um, achievable is thinking for you personally and, and with what you're doing with social media is it realistic to grow by 20 customers per month and it's just when you're thinking of your goals in this way it just helps you to set set a goal that you're more likely to achieve and also that kind of positive self-fulfilling prophecy of once you've achieved one goal you feel more confident about the next goal and you'll start feeling much better about what you're doing on social media um, which is makes it much more likely that you'll be um, actually kind of allocating the time that social media um, needs to provide great business results for you and your hub um, and you want to make sure that it's relevant so that ties back to what I said about how your social media goals should fit into your wider business goals as well so just make sure that it's relevant so for example growing followers could link in with your overall business goal of gaining more customers to your hub because essentially as you gain more followers you've gained an extra layer of relationship with potential customers um, and then also time bound I with a good goal, it's always give yourself a target time frame with wh in which to achieve it. And this, again, it really helps with motivation and it helps you. So then next time you'll know whether that goal were within that time frame was possible or not. And it just will help you in the future to know what kind of things you can expect to achieve with your social media. And here, when I set, share these slides in the Facebook group after the session, I've created a template of a social media strategy document. So this, may or may not be relevant for you now but it might be something that you could have a look at skim through see what you know already it's got loads of instructions for each part of it and this is what a kind of a basic template of a social media strategy would look like um, but you can take or you can take what you want and just delete what you don't and make it really work for you but it might be a nice place to store your ideas and your goals and also it means it's kind of future proofing what you're doing because if you ever found yourself in a position to be able to bring on a new member of a team or perhaps had a volunteer that really wanted to get involved um, with social media with you as well or it just means that you've got something that you can share with them that just helps them get up to speed really quickly with what you're doing so it's essentially future proofing what you're doing and if you work through it kind of strategic like in step by step it will just help you kind of pull all of your your social media ideas into one place that you can refer to which will be a big help so I want to talk a bit about the algorithms um, one of the main things to consider if you want to be successful at social media is to make sure that what you're doing on social media puts you in a good position um, with the algorithm with the Facebook and Instagram algorithms so I'm just gonna give you a quote from Mark Zuckerberg here um, he says that Facebook's goal is to reach a point where ads are as relevant and timely as the content your friends share with you so that means that Facebook itself has this overall goal and priority to keep users really engaged on their platform and to ensure that the time that we all spend on Facebook is time well spent um, and that the content on Facebook is relevant. And um, yeah, so it's kind of, that's where Facebook wants the content on this platform to go. So it essentially the algorithm shows people it ain't more of content that fits those parameters and less of content that doesn't. And by content, I mean your posts. So essentially the algorithm makes it tougher for your post to actually get in front of your followers. Um, and so this is actually called reach. So every time you post on Facebook, it doesn't mean that everyone is seeing that post. Face the Facebook algorithm will choose who gets to see that post and who doesn't. And it shows that in the news newsfeed or not. 
and however many people it shows is called the reach of the post. Facebook will show your post to more people if you are on the right side of the algorithm in the way that you're posting. So, and the algorithm is a really clever piece of software that predicts how users will react to your post and prioritizes posts which spark conversations or meaningful interactions with people. So it's really trying to cut, and this is beneficial for your food hub because when, if you're kind of posting in a way that works with the algorithm, that means that you're also creating content and putting posts out there that spark conversations or meaningful interactions between your customers. So in a way it's, it's a good thing because it will help to kind of push you in the right direction to, to post content that really resonates with your customers. So there's a few things not to do. Um, and again, I'm gonna share these slides, but feel free to take some notes if you haven't heard of these points before. But one of the main things not to do is don't engagement bait. And what I mean by this is don't specifically in a post ask people to like, share or comment. Um, and that's because the algorithm kind of flags that as spammy and it just, it, it will give you negative like algorithm ranking the algorithm will rank you negatively if you do these behaviors so it's just whenever you're posting it's like this magical thing of being able to you know encourage people to like and share your post just through your content without specifically or uh, without specifically asking them to do that action that you want them to take so it's a it's a tricky one but there are lots of i'm going to go into a bit more detail about ways you can do this but it's just avoiding like the plague the words like comment, share, and like, comment, like, comment, shares, etc. So but you can ask for feedback and ask questions, but I'll talk about that in a second. So also don't use any link shorteners. If you don't, if you haven't used them already, then don't worry about this, but using things like Bitly, which can shorten links to make them look tidier. Facebook gives that negative um, rankings because it can take people to a page where they don't know where they're going. They could say one thing and take someone somewhere else. So um, don't share any fake news on your business page. And the parameters for fake news are set by Facebook. So it's anything, even if it you don't believe it to be fake news, it's better to kind of steer away from um, anything that's on your on your on your personal page it's okay but on your hub page just be really careful to share anything that facebook might consider fake news um and that's like a own personal judgment around that so um and also try not to make your posts sound like adverts and also try it this is a tricky one but as much as you can try not to share links which take users off of facebook Obviously you have to, and this is one of the best things about Facebook is that you can put links in the post which will take people where you want them to go. Um, but it's just be mindful of how often you do that because the if you're constantly taking people off of Facebook, the algorithm will, um, will negatively rank those posts. But don't be afraid to, but just make sure that it's not like every post you're inviting people to go to a page off of Facebook. And some positive news, there are ways to do well with the algorithm and that's anything that promotes engagement without specifically asking for it. So if you post an interesting post and you invite um, your followers to engage with it through, for example, posting a question or even um, inviting your followers to give you feedback or things like this, like that's a nice way to get yeah to promote engagement so that people engage with your post um also if you're posting interesting posts or sharing interesting content that you know will resonate with your uh, with your audience then this is likely to encourage a conversation around it and that's my second point is create meaningful and relevant content which promotes conversation and that's because the more engagement with your posts, the better ranking you have with the algorithm. And also the other positive thing about this is it's actually the better the relationship with your customer that you're creating through this tool of Facebook. Um, posting more videos is a really good way to get on the right side of the algorithm because the algorithm considers videos as valuable content. Um, reply and respond to comments and questions on your posts. Um, if anyone comments, even if you're busy, try and at least respond with a like. Um, and it's just, again, it it's logged by the algorithm as a, as a kind of conversation. And if you post a comment and then the your follower writes back another comment, 
that's considered a conversation, which is really good um, algorithm bonus points for that post. So it means that then more people are likely to see that post. And the other major thing is consistency, which I'll be talking about a lot through this, um, through this session. So Instagram also controls what posts users see with its own algorithm. Um, with, with Instagram, more people will see your posts, um, even with the algorithm, but it's around 20% of your audience. So with Facebook, it's a lot smaller. It's, no, it's usually between kind of maybe two to 3% um, was the latest statistic that I saw of your followers will see your post, um, unless you've got really good results with the algorithm. Uh, but on Instagram, it's around 20%. And yeah, so there's a few factors that Instagram have revealed um, about how they work their algorithm. And the three things that, that Instagram cares about, and that this is what Instagram considers making useful content for Instagram. So this is what Instagram assumes that users will want to see. So it's the, if you kind of think of these three almost like points with every post that you post, um, then you'll naturally be more on the right side of the algorithm. And it's just, yeah, interest is one of the main ones. Um, and the algorithm monitors interest in that it, it sees what posts are getting the most attention and it monitors how much time is, is being spent on those, spent on those posts. Um, because the longer someone spends on a post, it's a higher indication of interest. So the algorithm is really smart in that it can actually measure how long users are spending reading a post and also how many people are viewing the post. So that's one way. And it also prioritizes content which keeps people engaged on the platform for longer. Um, and again, that's shown by length of time spent on the post. So a really easy way to get on the right side of this is to post swipe posts. And if you haven't seen them already, it's a post of more than one image and users can click to go through the multiple images that you've posted, which keeps them on that post a little bit longer, um, which will give you better algorithm rankings, which mean that means that more people are likely to see that post. Um, and also writing longer captions in Instagram. So, if, and that's because again, it, it keeps people on there for longer. You can almost consider your captions on Instagram like little micro blogs. Um, if you could, if you can put maybe three or four paragraphs, that's great, but the longer the better, anything that kind of keeps people engaging with you for a little bit longer. Um, and again, that means that more people will see the post. And also it's a great thing that when you're kind of like, there's this, if you're writing kind of content in this way, you're audience feels like you care about them because you've taken the time to write in this way. Um, and also a really simple tip is that faces and text posts usually get the longest time spent on them or the most engagement. So or at least the most attention. And the next thing to think about is timeliness. So this is for you to check insights for the best time for you to post. So in um, Instagram insights, will show you um, when your audience are most likely to be looking on Instagram. And then you wanna try and target your posts around that time. Um, and because then if that user's on at that time and your post is coming at that time, you'll get better rankings because it's close to the time that they're online. And one of the major factors here as well is building relationships. Um, and that's any a relation, the algorithm ranks any kind of engagement as an indicator of relationship. It counts any direct messages. So if people message you on Instagram, um, Instagram kind of logs that as you having a, a better relationship or a more engaged relationship. So that person will then see more of your content. Um, and yeah, so it acknowledges how much time you spend interacting with other accounts and how much time they spend interacting with you. And a way to really work with this is to try and spend at least one hour a week engaging with other accounts if you can. Um, and if that's too much, even if it's just 15 minutes, just liking um, some of the posts on other accounts, maybe a couple of well-placed comments, um, particularly if people have liked and commented on, on your post before, then it's like that kind of back and forth is logged by the algorithm and it deepens the relationship because they'll see more of your content. And when you post, stick around for a little bit. And if anyone ever replies to a post that you've posted, 
then you want to respond to everything. Um, and this is when I'm when I'm giving all of these tips, like this is the ideal. Um, and I appreciate um, that you might be juggling lots of balls and social media is just one of one of a fountain of other things you might be thinking about. But um, this, so what I'm saying here is like the best practice to do. But whatever time you have, if you could squeeze. 15 minutes to just spend a bit of time engaging with people it helps with your with your reach on Instagram and yeah try and make conversations and talk to people on Instagram if you feel confident enough to do so it might be nice to start with your um, start with your own um, like for example your best customers or if you've got particularly interactive followers on Instagram then yeah the odd kind of comment on their post is really nice so if you see something they might be interested in you could share a post with them in their direct messages and yeah this is this is a really good growth tactic um for kind of building these relationships and improving your algorithm score which means that more people see you and also you can remember to tag um, relevant account accounts in your post as well and so this is all that idea of building this this relationship um with with other users on instagram so the next thing I want to talk about is the importance of creating a posting schedule and as much as you can committing to it and it's going back to this idea of consistency being one of the main have, having total consistency as much as you can is one of the main ways to succeed um, on social media so if you can create a posting schedule that's sustainable to you and commit to that um, then it will really drastically improve your results because what I find, um, I mean, I've done it before and people I've worked with have done it lots of times is that you have kind of a flow of inspiration and you might do like five posts in a week and then life takes over and you're busy doing other things and then you leave it three weeks before you post again. And it's this kind of lack of consistency means that you won't be able to create the results that you really want from, from social media. Um, and Again, this is like an ideal. Um, and if you were doing this, for example, you'd be doing better on social media than probably 90% of other small businesses. Um, and this posting schedule, there's lots of different ways to make this sustainable and actually not take that much time. Um, and it's about finding a way that works for you. Uh, there's, a really, <clears throat> there's a really great tool where you can do all of your scheduling in one place. Um, which is from Facebook and Instagram, and it's called the Creator Studio, which I'll share later. And for example, if you were doing all of this on there and you're perhaps blocking out one or two hours once a week to just get all of this in there and done, um, then that might be a way to make that sustainable for you. Um, stories are maybe a little bit more tricky because you can't schedule stories in advance. But if you were able to post three stories per day, it could be something that, you had taken videos throughout the week before you could start to kind of just take short videos and um, I'll be talking in a minute about something that we're um, going to be doing that might help you with that if you want to take part. Sorry my dog's just itching and making <laughs> yeah stop stop <laughs> sorry um so she totally distracted me uh so okay so I'm going to talk about Facebook and why um Facebook scheduling is so important and first of all if you're you might have looked at my Facebook 41 rule and I'm going to explain what that is in a second but essentially it means posting seven seven posts per week and you might think that's a lot so I just want to talk about why that's a good idea to kind of um and the ways that I've that that will make that easier to do but first of all, why even try? And that's because Facebook is one of the main drivers for traffic um, from all of the social media platforms. And it's because um, Facebook reaches more people than any other social platform. Um, and it also is, yeah, it, and that means that it's also a major traffic driver. By traffic, I mean people seeing something on Facebook and clicking to go somewhere you want them to go, i.e. your shop front on the OFN or your website or whatever the destination is that, that you want your customers to take. This is just a pie graph of the traffic that we see for the OFN shop fronts and where it comes from. Um, and this is just for social media, so this doesn't include other ways to the, to the site. But as you can see, Facebook is a major source of traffic. And for most businesses that I've worked with, if not all, Facebook has been the main driver of traffic to their site. 
Um, so it's a really, again, it's a really useful tool um, to use. And so if you do this, then it's a way of doing it right. And so I'm gonna talk here about the 41 posting strategy. And what I mean by this is it's a division that I've created of the types of posts that you post on Facebook that will work well with the algorithm and also will give your audience a good spread of different things that you're sharing that will help them to engage with what you're doing. Um, part of the way to work well with the algorithm is to be part of the Facebook community. And, it met, and when you're sharing other Facebook users' posts, you start, the algorithm logs you as an active member of the community. And it's also this kind of like this good practice of social love that you're giving to other accounts that hopefully they will reciprocate and share your content too. So, um, so if you were to post four shared posts per week, these could be things like industry news or relevant articles from um, trusted uh, Facebook site, um, pages or external sites that you might find content on. Um, I would focus on positive inspirational content here um, or content that helps to increase knowledge and understanding of the different issues. For example, faced, um, facing food and farming in the UK would be a really um, good place to start. And you can schedule shared posts in advance using the, the Creator Studio, which I'm gonna show later. And so that means that um, one thing that I, I find really useful with shared posts is to create a bookmark in my web browser, or at least where I can save um, Facebook pages that regularly post content that fits into the voice of, for example, who I'm posting for. Um, so you could create a list of relevant pages where you're likely to find good content to share. And then that means when you sit down to find your four shared posts, you've got a list of people to go straight to, you can see what they've posted recently, um, and it just speeds up that process for you. So it could you could end up being able to do to schedule four shared posts in the space of 20 to 30 minutes whilst also looking at articles that you personally find interesting. Um, so that's quite a nice way, way to start. Um, shared content from other growers, farms and food producers, your supporters, partners and network um, is a really good idea because you're supporting other businesses um, and companies you have a relationship with or who are aiming for the same goals. And the two original content posts would be posts that you've created yourself. And this, these are these are a really great place to really talk about the things that you want your customers to know. Um, so this is where you want to focus on creating really nice, engaging content, which I'm going to talk about in a second. Um, in these posts, don't ask for likes or shares, comments, tags, clicks, etc. So try and keep those like a give post. So I call the these two original content posts and then one ask post a kind of give, give, ask formula. So it's when you're creating your own posts, you're giving um, your audience something, be that a story they can connect with emotionally, be it an educational piece about how to prepare that strange vegetable or be it a... Um, uh, an entertaining funny picture of some frolicking piglets or something like this it's it's something that provokes something positive in your audience or at least helps them learn something that is valuable and then these two together are creating this algorithm positive bed <laughs> for this ask post which would be the important post where you're actually asking your audience to do what you want them to do to be seen by as many people as possible so by doing these two, by doing the share post and your own original post, it means that when you do do this all important ask post, i.e. Um, order cycle closing, visit the shop front today, or please join our mailing list, that will be seen by more people because it will be on the bed or kind of, it will be supported by this previous activity here. So it's a way of making, making this work a lot harder for you rather than what I see most people doing is doing a lot of these posts which aren't actually seen by many people because it um the algorithm rank, ranks it as being un, in not very valuable for the for the facebook community um if you're constantly asking um and it's also if you think about it from your audience's perspective it's like if 
you're constantly asking, not giving. It can, yeah, it's if you think of it from a human perspective, it's it's if you've had a couple of positive reactions with um with a hub's content, and then they ask, you're more likely to take that action of the ask, which is so yeah. I always think give, give, ask helps me with this and. Cool, so now I'm gonna talk about Instagram and why bother do the hard work of posting two times a week or three times a week. Um, and it's because Instagram is really good for engagement. It doesn't drive as much traffic as Facebook does. It's got a smaller user group. Um, generally, the demographics are younger on Instagram, but still it's really good for brand awareness you get seen by more people because the the reach is higher at 20 percent so more people generally see you even if you're not doing well with the algorithm and also yeah engagement is a lot higher on instagram and that's measured in things like likes and shares and comments so you're more likely to drive interactions there than on on facebook so it's really good for building awareness around your food hub or food enterprise um, it's also great for storytelling and it's great for developing relationships and selling in a really friendly, authentic way that doesn't feel too salesy. Um, and also people are more, when they're on Facebook, they're more wanting to connect with friends and family, even though they do take actions with businesses, obviously. But on Instagram, people are much more open for developing relationship with a business. 80% um, of Instagram users follow at least one business. And 72% of users say they've purchased a product that they've seen on the platform. Um, so it's a good place for high value engagement. And by engagement, I mean people connecting with what you're putting out through liking or sharing or commenting on it. And all of those things just indicate that the person who's doing the action has had a positive reaction to you and what you're doing. Um, so it's a way of building relationships on, online. So, with Instagram, it's important to consider what you can commit to. The best posting strategy is a sustainable one. Um, so it's try and be as consistent as possible. So think about what is likely that you'll be able to commit to in the long term. So for example, if posting three times a week is too much, um, it's better to commit to posting once a week and just doing that regularly as a habit than it is to post three times one week and then nothing the next week and then three times. So it's just best to have a, cons a sustainably consistent approach um, to posting. And also, it's this, I think with Instagram more than having, um, I think posting is fairly straightforward. Uh, the, but the, the most important thing around having a, a kind of a posting strategy or a schedule is having good habits. Um, so it's every time you post, spend about 15 to 30 minutes just before you post um, building attention around the post through doing community activity and what i mean by that is just before you post a new post go to your previous post that you posted before last week um, or a day before or if you scheduled like look at the last couple of posts or just look at previous posts and see who has liked the post who's commented on the post or luckily if it's happened anyone that shared the post and just go to their profile and just like them like a couple of their most recent posts it's it's kind of by doing that that interaction people get in notifications on instagram if their posts are liked so it just means that you're much more likely for these people who have already interacted with you to go to your most recent post when you then post it and give you some positive um positive engagement like a like or a comment and this is great because then when you've posted that post will be shown to more people um, because the algorithm is seeing it as being um, a good a good post so more people will see it so it's rather than having like a, a posting schedule like facebook with instagram it's post twice a week or post once a week whatever works for you with the time that you have um, and just getting into the habit of just before you post going back to previous posts, looking at who has interacted with you, sending them a little bit of social love um, with their posts, and then then post your post, and you're much more likely to get some engagement from more people, which means that then that post works better with the algorithm. Um, and 
Yeah, so I'm going to talk here as well about consistency in look and appeal. This is the other thing with Instagram. You don't have to worry about this on Facebook because it's a newsfeed that um, it's your, it, it just doesn't work the same way. Instagram is a very visual platform. So it's good to maintain consistency in look and appeal of your page. So it's just as much as you can, try and create a consistent look to your page. So think about the imagery in your grid, think about color schemes um, and think about content and try and have most things on at least in the same on the same top on the same kind of yeah in the same same yeah niche of food um, for example and if you have a couple of other things that you talk about maybe have a think about limiting limiting it to maybe two or three and just somehow kind of bringing that consistency in so that when users come to your page they know what to expect they know what information they're going to find and but then also creativity trumps this so it's much better to be creative and you can maybe maintain consistency in another way like maybe every fifth post um post a word post like a um an image with text post that has a consistent color that feeds through you. and that's another quick and simple way of just making things look a little bit more consistent um, I'm going to make, I'm going to be doing a session on Canva design um, and other different tools and design um, in the coming weeks. So if you want to know how to create posts like that in a kind of step-by-step -step way, that's really easy and approachable. Um, I'll be posting details on the, on the Facebook group about when and where that will be. Um, and I'll take you through the steps of creating some posts like this that will help you. So the next thing I want to talk about is stories. So Facebook and Instagram stories are 20, uh, are, they're basically short videos that are only about 12 seconds long. Um, or they can be shorter and they only last for 24 hours. So this has a really awesome effect in that um, they don't have to be perfect because they're transitory. People expect them to be a lot more kind of trans, like a lot more authentic, a bit more kind of real and rough around the edges. You don't have to kind of post great content with your stories. It's behind the scenes stuff and real moments from your day is the best thing here. And I know that's tricky, particularly, for example, through lockdown or maybe if you're working from home more or even if your days are just really busy, it's difficult to kind of think, oh, I'm just going to bring out my phone and take a video. Um, but it's it's a good thing to get in the habit of doing and um, of just if you see something that's like marginally funny, cute, interesting, then it's likely that your followers will find it those things too. So it's just thinking as you're if you're if you're managing your Facebook and Instagram profiles for your hub, then this is just one part of this is something that you can add in to your process that will give you great results. Um, and the reason why is that fit stories both on Facebook and Instagram have a really good priority position in terms of attention where people can see them um, which means they're much more likely to be seen and gain interaction which therefore has positive effects to the algorithm um, for when you do your standard posts so they're a really good good thing to get into using so yeah and 62% of Instagram users say they were more interested in a business after seeing it in stories, which is great. The ideal would be to post three times per day um, and keep, yeah, and also keep using insights, Instagram insights um, to improve what you're doing. So see how your stories have performed and keep tweaking and doing better. You might be surprised at what stories get the most positive responses. Um, and yeah, I think transparency, transparency and like the real tend to do really well in stories and ways to measure it in insights um, are for example tap backs are good so it's if someone's watching this short video they can tap back on the left if they want to see it again so insights rank that as a positive interaction so you can look at that number of tap backs to see whether your stories post if it has a high number of tap backs then you know that people were interested in it. Um, as a negative indicator, if people didn't like the story, exits and next story is not a good sign because if it's got a high number of those, it means that people have swiped off of your profile onto someone else's or they've exited um, stories altogether. Um, so it's just a good way to track those three things because then you can measure how good your story posts are and if you want to tweak and adjust. Um, 
Also, if you can, put text in them as well. Like if you're speaking to the phone, just summarize what you're saying in a caption because 60% um, of stories are viewed with the sound off um, and no, 40%, sorry, are viewed without sound. So also you can use polls and questions um, for engagement. And the other really cool thing about that is stories are a great place to get feedback from your customers because um, you can put people are used to kind of responding to polls and questions on Instagram stories. So you might be really lucky and get some really good feedback from your customers or maybe even a testimonial. Um, and connect Instagram with Facebook and you can share stories across both. This is a great way to save you time. If you're posting on Instagram, then it will automatically share it on Facebook. Um, after this session, I'm, uh, I'm gonna post with this when I post this into the, the Marketing Hub group. I'm gonna post a list of really useful links um, and how to, so each of these will have a step. So take away what you will from this session and maybe you might just walk away with a couple of little actions that you wanna follow up later. Um, and then you can, I'll make it really clear so you can see which links will help you through the steps of each of these because I realize I'm throwing quite a lot in one space here, so. Um, and you can also, you can also, extend the time that your stories are live by turning them into highlights um, and you can save your best stories in themed highlights which display there on your profile um, and again i'll share a, a how to for you and for this one you really want to choose your best um, but it means that if you've got really great stories that had good interaction you're really proud of you can keep them on your profile for longer which just helps to build this that like the a profile that people want to want to spend time on um, as a next step you could even try out instagram tv if you want to put longer stories on um, and yeah and i want to say here as well whenever you post as part of the when you post on instagram i said spend a few minutes 10 to 15 minutes before interacting with your best followers um, so that you your post is like to get more engagement you can also share your posts in your stories. So you just go to your post, go to the arrow, add it to your story, and then here you go. And that just means, again, more people can see it. Um, and you might even get some shares for if you've got any um, advocate followers that might share it for you to get more interest to take your post. People can just click on this and it will take them to your post. So I think the main thing as well to remember is that done is better than perfect when it comes to stories. Um, and it's really good to get into the habit of doing them. People really want to see transparency and, and authenticity, you know, the real and the raw. And yeah, and I think it's also um, what helps as well is being really audience centered. So rather than, that, especially if you're talking to the camera, you can talk as you're recording something else. If you are feeling brave, you can speak with your face to the camera. And this is also advice you can give to other people if they want to talk to the camera is that if you kind of keep in mind that um, try not to be self-focused um, or self-conscious, be audience centered and message focused. So it's rather than fearing how we might look or sound in a video, it's focusing rather than on yourself, it's focusing on your audience and what you want to say. And it's also really helps to think, this sounds a bit like cheesy self-help, but I'm sorry for that, but it's helped me because I'm actually very introverted and shy. Um, but just think empowering thoughts when you're facing the camera. Um, so it, you could use your own personal core values or you could think about, you know, even the things you really care about that you really want to provide awesome, fresh, nutritious produce to people and, you know think these empowering thoughts of why you're doing what you're doing and you know for example for me what really helps me with talking with the camera is really thinking about how much I really want to help um I really want to help hubs do better marketing so they can thrive and, and 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 yeah and 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 do better and thrive and more people get great awesome food and supporting the food system that we want to see and all of these things so it's, it's a way to kind of take your focus out of, oh no, I have to speak to the camera to, you know, really think, like feeling positive about doing that. So it's a bit of a cheesy tip, but it works. Um, so hopefully next time you have to speak or you, you feel inspired to speak to your camera, um, that might help you. And okay, so I think another thing that really helps is just to keep notes, write down any ideas, um, just have like a little thing where you're, 
if you think up of anything on the go, just write down your ideas. And that means that when you sit down and do your posting, um, that you've got a kind of go-to place to, yeah. And I wanna talk about a stories challenge that we're gonna do. And what this is, is we're gonna offer one week's stories posting prompts. So this is because stories are such a great way to connect and promote your hub. Um, and if you wanna get better results with your Instagram and Facebook marketing, um, it's really good to embrace the stories. Um, they provide so much good stuff in terms of better results with the algorithm and really like more views and visibility. People see you more. Pe um, they're given priority places, both on Instagram and on Facebook, where people are more likely to see you. So it's just such a good thing to be using. Um, but as I was just talking about, it's hard to know. Um, there's a lot of barriers about being on the camera or there's also, it's, it's hard to know what to share. And um, so what we're offering here is a way to bring hubs together to collectively grow story views um, on Facebook and Instagram. So it's gonna be really easy to participate. Um, at the beginning of the challenge, I'm gonna send a full list of all of the prompts at once. So you can plan in advance if you prefer. But then what's going to happen is every day for five days, I'll send an email with ideas, prompts and examples of what stories you could post on that day, along with tips, advice and best, best practice as well. Um, and if you participate in a challenge fully, um, you'll get into a habit of posting more stories. And even if you're not posting three a day, um, you might be more likely then to post one a day or just post or you just, it's kind of get, once you've kind of done a week of this, it will feel a lot more comfortable to post stories more often. Um, and so we're gonna start on the 14th of September and it will run until the 18th. And we'll be using hashtag as well, so you can connect with other hubs who are participating in the challenge and perhaps support each other too. Um, I like to think share together, grow together. So uh, more on this in the Facebook um, marketing hub group. So, a little quick spotlight on the Creator Studio, and this is a new-ish offering from Facebook and Instagram. It looks a bit like this. When I share the slides, this will click through to the, stu the studio so you can have a look around. When you go in for the first time, it will actually give you your own, um, it will walk you through step-by-step -step how to use it and what you're seeing. So it's really intuitive and it's much easier than um, other ways I, I find to, to post on Facebook and Instagram. You can do it all in one place. You can swap between Facebook and Instagram here. It's provided by Facebook, so, um, but yeah, you can swap between the two accounts here. You could just set this up with both of your accounts. Again, if you want a step-by-step -step of how to do this, it's something that I can, I can do. Just give me a shout in the Marketing Hub group. Um, and it's just a great way to get organized and also to schedule in advance. And if you're doing everything here, good to get used to one place um, and it might help it um, it's likely to help you to get into a habit of scheduling which could save you time and so okay so the next thing I want to talk about is the importance of creating great content your audience will love and I did a content creation uh, masterclass last week and I'll cover some of the same bits here um, but a few new where I'm bringing together lots of things so this is a bit of a recap session um, which I hope is not overrunning. So, um, so I mean, one of the best things about creating great content is that it shows your customers that you care, um, and it helps. Which because they, when you're creating great content, your customers will intrinsically feel that you, they'll know that you've written it for them, and that you know people kind of subconsciously know how much time and effort it takes, and it it will help give them the feeling that you care about them. And that will then help you to build stronger, more loyal relationships with your audience. And that so that your audience on Facebook and Instagram, for example, are more likely to buy with you and to, once they've already bought with you, if they're current customers, to stay with you and to buy again and again. So first thing here is to just make sure you have really clear key messages for your social media posts, as this will help your audience to resonate with your content. Um, as well as helping you to know what to write about in your social media. If you have a list of key messages to go to when you're writing posts, it just takes, it makes sure that that post is fulfilling a function that you've identified that you'd like to talk about or that you'd like it to fulfill. But it also means that you're not kind of staring at a blank post. You've got 
a message to kind of anchor it around or to embed within a longer post or a story. And yeah, so it's really important to create these with thinking about what you want your audience to know and also what you know they care about as well. So it's the cross section of those is where the magic happens with having really potent key messages. So if you think about all of these different things here, what you want your customers to know about you, to think about you, um, what your main benefits are, um, make it really easy for your customers to know what they would gain um, from buying from you. So you can also consider here what, what makes you stand out from the alternatives and you know, for example, with um, yeah, being part of a new food system, then like that's so, that's a really resonant message, probably for a, a big proportion of your customers. So it's you know, it's how to kind of pull in these bigger ideas into key messages that you can use in your social um, and repeat, because then your customers start to trust that you really are who you say you are as a business because they're hearing the same message from you it's that consistency of what you're saying that will help build this trust because we yeah in terms of kind of marketing we live in a time where customers are bombarded with a lot of stuff and also a lot of greenwashing etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's you know this is not yeah and so it's just good to really know what you want to say and what you're about and and kind of infuse what you're posting with these messages that you want your customers to to believe about you so it's good to think about what kind of ideas like valuable ideas you could build your content around um, and for example when you're thinking of these it's good to have your main goal um, as an enterprise in mind um, what is your mission what do you care about what are you trying to achieve and so I mean for inspiration you could consider what the world would look like if we as a food movement could realize our big big ideal our big goal and use that as an inspiration to kind of infuse these key messages with with vision also just saying don't overthink it as well it can be as simple and as beautiful as you know we provide fresh healthy nutritious um, vegetables for your family something you know it's some it's it yeah so it it's just messages that you know will resonate with your customers and also tells them what you want them to know about you. So also I like to think about posting on social media as almost right, like you want your first sentence to be as strong as a headline. Um, so it's just really making your post as catchy as possible. Sorry about the cool cat. Um, I was struggling with what to put on this post. And well, no, 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 sorry, he's cute. Um, so you want to, try and make the first paragraph almost like a really strong introduction that you might see in a blog post or and then also the first sentence being as strong as a headline um when i share these these posts there's a couple of things you can click on here that will help you with this this link will take you to this really good headline analyzer which will tell you how strong your headline is and so I'd look at that and try and create the strongest first sentence that you can, because often social media will chop your, um, will minimize your message just to the first certain limit of characters. I think it's like 150 or something. And then people have to click on a read more button to read more. Um, so if you have a really strong first sentence, then it's just encouraging your reader to click on read more to read the rest of what you're trying to say. Um, and having a really strong intro will just maintain their interest to pull them through the post. So I think it's really important for social media to, to get the first, those things really right. Also, whilst keeping in mind done is better than perfect, but these are just ways to kind of tweak in and create more better content that you're putting out there. Um, the other thing is to tell a story. So that's because people are 22 times more likely to remember a fact if it's embedded within a story. So it's worth time taking your time to consider or create your own unique food enterprise story if you don't have one already or if you do have one then start to infuse that with what you're putting out on social media and um, think about for example ways to make it really engaging is to think about what is your call to adventure to your audience and this is a really interesting one for us because it's your call to adventure is you know we're creating a a, a new food system 
So that's a pretty big call to adventure, but you can think of lots of different ways around this. It's like to try and kind of take take your audience along with you, make them feel like they belong to, yeah, to, to your story. And here's a really basic framework that might help you with thinking about posts this way. And it's, this is, this would work particularly well with like a grammar story or even your own food and post story if you wanted to write a post on that. Um, so it's starting with a human, um, establish what their goal or desire is and introduce resistance or an obstacle of some kind. Um, and obviously we're facing a lot um, as a return to food movement. And the final message, so think about what you want to inspire your audience to believe in or care about through this story. Um, the other thing is to remember the three E's, and I've talked about these before, but before you post something, think, is it educational, emotional, entertaining? Um, it can be one of these, and or it could be, if it's amazing if it's all three, um, but even if it's just one, that's okay, but it's just starting, this is, this is kind of anchoring the post into providing value because these three reactions are valuable to your audience member. So educational, it's, does it provide useful information or give a good perspective? Um, you, yeah, and don't underestimate the educational value as well as behind the scenes posts. Um, also emotional does it reach the reader viewer on a personal level does it make them feel something or believe in something um and is it and for entertaining is it fun um to read does it make people laugh is it cute and so the other part which kind of feeds into a couple of things i've spoken about already is to build and support your digital community and this is a way to grow and thrive on social media and also to gain the most interaction and views that you can so it's just feeling that your social media is part of a, a wider community on social media and being community minded. So rather than just kind of broadcasting your message and that's, I mean, that's a good starting point, um, but it's then thinking you're not just kind of broadcasting your message every time. Like, how are you making that more circular? How are you making, how is that, how can you then make your presence more community minded? And yeah, so, a good way with your customers is to, which I've mentioned before, is to make them feel like they're part of something bigger. For example, the alternative food movement. Um, show your customers that you share the same values and care about the same issues that they do. Uh, and also you can, as a team or as a, uh, if you're working alone, really sit down and think about what issues you want to align yourself with and how you will communicate what you're aligned with, like what's authentic to you. Don't be afraid to express what you believe in. And in the long run, sharing values with your customers, it leads to a deeper emotional attachment, um, which generates a deeper sense of belonging. And also if you're uncomfortable speaking on a topic yourself, um, but it feels resonant with what you're, what you're doing as, a, as an enterprise, then you can also share other users' posts as well. So if someone else is saying it better, um, you can share what, they're saying and then that also helps to kind of link you and what you believe in to, to to the messages that you're sharing so this might be a way to kind of yeah if you're not confident talking on it yourself then that's a way to to kind of link your enterprise to these messages that your audience will resonate with um so this is important to kind of think about this first and figure out what works well for your hub um and what will work well for your community and your 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 customers so it's, yeah. So the other thing is to respond to everything. And I appreciate that this takes time, but at the very least, if someone comments on a post, um, it doesn't have to be straight away. It's just at least like a comment, any comment. Um, and if someone likes something you've posted, then like something they've posted back. It's, it's just this, and if someone shares a post of yours on Facebook, definitely like their share and say thank you. And it's just, Again, it's a way of like people, if people are taking positive action for your hub, um, I am talking to you or, or sharing you and, you know, any action that, you know, for example, a share is, is definitely an action where they're advocating for your hub to their fault. And it's quite a big thing for someone to share a post because they're saying to their community that they want to identify with you and what you're doing. And that's a really good thing. So if, you know, that gets, that's, to definitely warrant a, a thank you comment and a, and a like so 
and that's how it's kind of been more community minded on Facebook. And a lot of the stuff I've talked about already will take you that direction as well. Um, for example, um, if you're doing well with the Facebook algorithm, you're sharing posts, that's being community minded as well because you're sharing the posts of like minded organizations who I'm sure will be happy to get the extra coverage that you're giving them. So it's it's a way of creating these like benevolent, um, positive, uh, mutually beneficial uh, relationships online. So the next thing is to take action for growth and visibility. I'm just going to like minimize the slides a second and just check the time because I've overrun. Are you both okay for time? I'm sorry, I was a bit late to start. Are we okay for another 10 minutes? Yeah, okay, cool, thank you, sorry. Um, when I was pulling this together, I didn't realize there's quite so much, but we're close to the end. I think I've only got a couple this point and a couple more to make, so. So, talking quickly about growth. So there's lots of different ways that you can grow your, your by growth I mean growing your following. Um, on Instagram and Facebook and one way is through when I talked about benevolent groups where you're sharing other or relevant organizations posts you if you're creating partnerships and this could be an eventual process but if you're creating partnerships with these groups or if you have any partnerships already with other um, growers other hubs other organizations other enterprises anything any partnerships is actually asking them to share um, your content is a really good way to gain growth because you will be, if they're relevant, then you'll be getting in front of the eyes and the awareness of relevant customer groups. So that's one good way. Um, and it is a bit of an outreach way I appreciate, but the other is, I mean, it's another really good thing on Facebook to do as a habit is that if anyone likes a post, invite them to like your page. So sometimes people who don't follow your page can like something that you've posted and then and then it's it's just really good practice to then you can do this by clicking on the likes and you'll see a list of the people um, who've liked it and it will give you a button option to invite them and what the invite button is is invite them to like your page so this is a good way um the other way is don't be shy about um sending invites to like your hub page to your to your friends on, on Facebook yourself or inviting other members of your hub to do the same. Um, people are quite used to seeing invites to like pages now on Facebook and it, it might not resonate with all of your friends on Facebook, but it might resonate with a few who'll be happy to, to learn more who you might not have thought would be interested. So it's just good to be um, confident in inviting people to like your, like your page. Um, there's a way to, again, if any of these bits need further explaining or even just like a hand holding kind of walkthrough of how to, then I'm, I'm here if you want me to show you how to do any of these things. So the other thing is to think about user generated content. Um, so you can ask your customers to tag you and write testimonials. Um, and this is good because word of mouth recommendations are the best way to gain new customers and new followers. Um, and if, for example, if you they write a testimonial for you and then you post it, then you can invite them to share their own testimonial, which most people would be happy to do. And then you're also re reaching their community, which are likely to be like minded people. Um, and on Instagram, it's good to have again, this is like a best case scenario. So I feel like I'm throwing a lot in this one session, but all of these bits, you can do a few things at once and then start to grow from these. Um, you can try outreach for new followers so you can search keywords in instagram so you kind of think of instagram almost like a search um, platform like google uh, where you can search keywords and tags in your area to find people you can interact with so you might find people who are interested in the same in, in um, sustainable food systems in your local area and then it might be the first time they've seen you or heard of you and by liking some of their posts they might return the favor so this is an extra time thing if you do have extra time to spend on Instagram. We just love Instagram. You want to spend more time on there. Um, gather content that you love. Um, leave comments on other people's posts that don't like your um, hub page yet. And that's a way to gain more followers. And also, again, if they're relevant, then you might find a new, a new customer in them. And this is very much a kind of one-on-one -on -one process, which I appreciate it could be time consuming. So it's up to you how far you take this. Um, 
and engage with people who are active in the same hashtags as you. That's another way. Um, and also, yeah, just just ask um, when you have, for example, if you're e engaging with customers on email, you could even add as a tag, like at the end of your email, like, oh, um, we've got a great Facebook page where we share our latest news. Please join and just give them a link to your Facebook page. Um, it's don't be afraid to ask. And it's just all of these different touch points help to kind of grow this relationship with your with your customers. So. Like I said, it, it helps to see social platforms as search engines um, because on Instagram in particular, your feed and the posts that you post are searchable and discoverable with hashtags. So I'm going to talk a bit of, I might skip the hashtag section because I know we're overrunning. Um, but here's some growth tips. And um, yeah, so... I've gone through all of these actually, so here's a nice summary page. Um, by find a squad, I mean, if you can create a group of, even if it's just team members, where you can get together and when you do post on your hub page, you all share that post. It's just finding a group of people who are happy to share and help, help you reach more people. And so with hashtags, um, I've done a really great handout on hashtags, which I'll share with this. Um, and it just ex explains everything you need to know about using them well, both on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. I've left Twitter out of this presentation um, because I feel like I really want to focus on, on Facebook and Instagram because they give the best results for hubs. So, and try as much as you can to include video content and this is another reason why the stories challenge that we're going to be doing will help because it will, you'll just get used to, to producing this and measure and improve which is my last slide so thank you so much for for sticking with me for this um so by measuring and responding it means using facebook and instagram insights to track how you're doing and how all your posts are doing I might do a session specifically on this one thing because um, I usually put this on as one post, but actually it's, there's a bit more depth to it. But it's essentially how you can continually improve what you're doing and give your customers more of what they like and love. Um, and this will increase your results. So it's, by, it's good to get into a monthly habit, at least, of looking at your performance over the last month, which have been your best posts, which have people engaged with the most, what's been doing well. And then you can start to really hone in what you're doing to give people more of what they love. And then also it helps you to save time because you're not spending time on writing posts that people aren't engaging with. So, and this is a way that over time you can start to do really well on, on social media and just continually improve. Um, and ways to do this as well is you can incorporate polls, ask questions and encourage your followers to share feedback as well. So by measurement, it's not just using insights. You can also actually ask your customers what they'd like to see more of. Um, and yeah, so thank you so much. I realized that this, yeah, I'm sorry this overran so much. I feel like I was trying to fit in quite a lot into one session. Um, so I'm gonna stop sharing. I don't know if that has actually stopped sharing. Yeah, I don't know, it hasn't. Yes, it has. So are there any questions? I feel like I just rattled off a lot of stuff. So um, did any of, was any of that um, really unclear or is, are there any particular bits that you might like a further future session on? Can you hear me? Sorry. I've you can yeah um i'd be really interested i'm still a little bit confused about the um the highlights um yeah. i really wanted to have like a recipe section or something like that and mm -hmm. see how to kind of but i can't quite work out how to do it so um i'd really love to have like a future session on on nice. something how to really make the most of that kind of wanted to have something where we all introduce ourselves and then have like a recipe section but i just i can't i tried to do it and i, I couldn't work it out <laughs> That's a really nice, that's a really nice idea. And I think I might do a session like that on Zoom because then I can actually plug my phone in and we can actually yeah. step through it on a phone and show you exactly what you need to do to do it. So that's really useful for me. So thank you. That might be a short, that might be like a 15, 20 minute skill pill kind of, kind of session. Yeah. So that's really useful. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Um, and I think that was it. I didn't write anything else down. Awesome. Thank you.
Yeah. Any anything from you, Sandra? Yeah, so I'm just trying to work out how to use it all. Um, <laughs> did I understand? I missed the one I think last week was on Instagram, wasn't it? Yeah, last week was on content. Um, so it was just all about creating good content. So I summarized a lot of it here. But I'm actually, right. I've, um, I've, I've managed to rescue the video. Basically, I recorded it without the slides. So I've rescued it and edited it. And I'm going to upload that on Facebook. So if you wanted to watch that, that will be in the Facebook marketing hub group um, and also on YouTube. So I could, yeah, so that, that. And I think the Instagram one was the week before. Yeah, yeah. I know. I I've missed two, I know, and I couldn't remember. One of them was Instagram, which I don't really know anything about. So I'd really like to pick up on that at some stage. But if it's in the library as such, then I'll have a look for it. Yeah, there's um, I've actually got a really big, like an essentials one, which is kind of the one I did um, not last lesson session before was more of a kind of math class. And what I did a while ago, probably a couple of, about a month ago, actually, a really basic session on getting started with Instagram, which might be which might be useful. So that sounds very like much more what yeah. I need. Yeah, lovely. Thank you. I can direct you to that on Facebook, so I'll find you in the group and just and um, send you send you a link to it if you like. That would be lovely. Thanks yes, so great. thank you. It. Yes, thanks very much. I've now got to go and pop my chat. Sorry. And thank you so much. I'm so sorry this took so long, but thank you. Okay, and right. Really good to thank you. And um, I'll post the recording as well for this session. I'll probably edit off the ends. Um, and yeah, so that should be up this evening. And again, thank you so much. And I hope it was useful. Edit, um, edit my son out of the beginning as well. I don't think he believed me. I think he thought I was trying to get rid of him. We waited until I started to say goodbye. Oh, <laughs> so, I have my dog like scratching halfway through, like rocking my table. So I don't know how to edit that out. But that would just, you know, really transparent. Practice what I preach. So <laughs> awesome. thanks, guys. Thanks for coming. And I'll see you. Take care. Bye. 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 Thank you.